What if I told you that I invented the most advanced water bottle ever? <laughs> Not to innovate, but to make a statement. It all started when I went to Target to buy my ultra manly underwear. And while I was there, I saw those popular Stanley tumblers. They seemed really cool and durable. But when I checked how much they cost, I was like, what the hell? For that much money, this tumbler better shoot the water into my mouth. And that's when it hit me. Curb, I know what we're gonna do today. So, according to my knowledge in engineering and my lifetime experience of drinking water, I can tell you that automating this process would require two things. A container to contain the water and a system to send the water into your mouth. Yeah, it's not really rocket science. But there are a few challenges that make this process not so easy. First, we need to produce a steady stream so the water doesn't just like drip out of the bottle pathetically. And obviously that requires a, a reasonable amount of pressure that only a pump can create. And then we have to find a way to make it compact enough so we can bring it anywhere. So yes, this is a legit engineering challenge. I have two pumps that I want to test to see which one would actually work better. First, I have this regular water pump. You just submerge it in water, plug it in, and then just get the, the water flowing. Easy peasy. Not gonna lie though, there already are a few issues that I see with this method, which I'll tell you in a second so you can figure it out yourself. Anyways, let's test it out. Okay. Ooh. Okay, okay. That's actually not bad. Here's a better angle. Okay, mission impossible. Not to get my desk wet. See? To be honest with you, I didn't think the stream would be that powerful. In terms of strength alone, I would say this pump is suitable for the system. I would only need to change the diameter of the tube because it's too wide. You want to drink water, not get waterboarded. But I'm not even gonna try that because of my main concern, which is that submerging a pump into the water you're gonna drink is probably not a good idea. It could corrode over time and also some unwanted materials could leak into the water. And you know what happens when you drink stuff like that? You get the cancer. L cancer. And I really don't wanna get L cancer. So let's try method number two. What if instead of pumping water out of the container, we pump air into it and that pushes the water out? That way, we don't need to submerge anything. And we can achieve this with an air pump, silicon tubes, plastic valves, and a plastic bottle. We just open two holes in the bottle, which I did using my soldering iron, then push in the plastic valves, seal them with a little bit of hot glue, connect the pump to the top one using the silicon tube, and the bottom one to another tube. So when we turn it on, the water should come out of this tube only with the pressure generated by the air. So let's see. In three, two, one. Can you see that? Can you see that? As you can see, the stream is smaller, so that means that we won't get waterboarded. And it's coming with a lot of pressure. That's good. <sighs> Do you feel that? It's the sensation of knowing that I will not get L cancer. Now, there are a couple of designs that I thought up for this system. And by the way, if you think that they look weird, it's because they are. I asked ChatGPT to sketch out my ideas, but apparently he's still a bit dumb when it comes to images. First, we got this one that resembles a water gun. Pros, it would make your bottle look very unique. I don't think that anyone drinks water out of a gun, so that's cool, I guess. Cons, you probably won't be able to pass it through airport security. Also, I don't think you want your little siblings to uh, watch you play Russian roulette every time you're thirsty. What are you doing, brother? I'm drinking water, Timmy! Which leaves us with option number two, a modern and probably thicker version of a Stanley Cup. Pros, you would be able to bring it anywhere without looking too weird. Cons, you won't be able to traumatize your little sibling. Also, I asked ChatGPT to put the red button in the handle and he basically just said, well, um, what if I fucking don't? Anyways, I think I'll 3 model a design similar to this one. Wait, Wait a, a minute, minute though. though, there is there's a little, a little issue, issue that we, that we need, need to address, address first. first. So before 3D modeling, I did a couple of more tests and realized something very important, which is that even after the pump is turned off, the water keeps flowing due to the residual pressure accumulated inside the bottle. 
See? So we need to find a way to stop that flow immediately or we'll be drinking water until the bottle is empty. Let me introduce you to the solenoid valve. It's a device that acts like an electronic switch for liquids or gases. When it's powered, it opens up and lets water flow through. When the power is cut, it closes instantly and seals the path, preventing even a single drop from escaping. However, since we don't want the water to touch any metal parts because of L cancer, I will try a different approach to make it work. Instead of cutting the water flow directly, I opened another hole, hot glued another plastic valve and connected it to the solenoid. And my logic is that if after drinking water I open this air outlet then the water won't be able to keep flowing because all the pressurized air will be released. Now that's my theory. Is that what's gonna happen? Probably not. But there is only one way to know. Okay so this is very easy we just have to turn on the pump then turn it off and then power on the solenoid. Powering on the pump, okay, then powering it off, then Power on the outlet. <laughs> no! No! Why do you keep flowing? Nah. Okay, so what I think happened is that the plastic valve is not wide enough to let all the air pressure exit rapidly. You can see that even after removing the solenoid that blocks the path, the water is still able to flow, meaning that the inside of the bottle is still being pressurized. So I removed the plastic valve and connected the solenoid using just the tube. Okay, that's number two. Pump of solenoid. Yes! Yes! I'm a fucking genius! Sorry about that. That was not very professional of me. Anyway, since we now know that the mechanism works, let's now focus on the circuit itself. These are all the components that will be inside the tumbler. We got a battery, a battery charging module, a nice red button, a voltage booster, the air pump, and the solenoid valve. This one though is different from the valve I used before. The first one was normally closed, meaning that you needed to plug it in to let the pressurized air out. But we actually want the opposite. We want it to be normally open and just close whenever we turn on the pump. So I bought the normally open version. And I want you to see something funny. This is literally the first thing I saw when I opened the package. L cancer. The way this works is that the battery is normally disconnected from the circuit, but when we press this red button it gets connected to the voltage booster which outputs the 35 volts that the pump and the solenoid need to work properly. So once all of this is inside the tumbler, we'll just press the button, drink the water, and then once we're done we just lift our fingers to make the water stop flowing. Now after a few hours of trying to fit everything in a case that resembled the Stanley Cup, I came up with this. A ginormous version of a Stanley Cup. It might not seem like it, but this thing is huge. Mostly because I needed to keep the plastic bottle separated from the circuit, which will go down here. These two holes are for connecting the pump and the outlet tube. Also, I made holders for the battery, the battery charging module, and the pump. If you see the handle, you'll notice a hole, which is where the button will be placed. Back here, we have an opening for releasing the pressure air and a little box for holding the solenoid valve. And on the front we have a nozzle, which is where the water will shoot out. The whole thing is divided into three main parts, and some of them will take a day to print. So if one of them fails halfway through, I'm definitely jumping out of my window. You know, maybe I should stop building stuff and just become a psychic because Fuck! Well, luckily for me, my 3D printer had a recovery mode to resume prints after a power outage. And honestly, I was surprised that it was able to do that because mine is one of the cheap ones. But if that hadn't been the case... So after a few days of printing everything, I now have all the parts needed to build the tumbler. So let's get straight to it. I started by gluing the first two parts to form the structure that will hold the plastic bottle. Next, I soldered wires to the bottom and added flyback diodes to both the air pump and the solenoid to protect the circuit from voltage spikes. I mounted the button inside the handle and passed the wires through the internal channel. After that, I opened an exit hole on the bottle to connect it to the solenoid valve. Then I hot glued a plastic valve onto the bottle and placed it inside the housing. I routed the solenoid wires through the main body toward the electric section. Then I connected the air outlet valve to the solenoid. I opened the holes for both the pump and the water outlet, then hot glued two additional valves into those openings. After that, I hot glued the pump into its holder and glued the holder into the bottom of the structure. The pump was then connected to the air inlet valve. Moving on to power. I hot glued the booster besides the pump and connected the button to the VN input. The pump and solenoid were then wired to the V out and ground of the booster. I then connected the outlet valve to the nozzle by passing the silicon tube through the opening. Next, I soldered wires to the charging module and to the battery. Both of them were secured in place using hot glue. 
I connected the battery to the charging module, then completed the power wiring by connecting the battery to the button and the booster's ground. Once everything was in place, I glued the bottom of the tumbler to the main structure. I attached the lid to the bottle cap using hot glue, then super glued the nozzle, and sealed the handle with its cover. Since I forgot to design an air intake hole for the pump, I opened it at the back of the device using my soldering iron. To finish, I screwed in the circuit lid and glued both the charging LED cover and the air intake cover in place. The assembly is now complete. Finally. As I said before, this thing is huge. And the funniest part is that only a third of its size is actually water. The rest is just plastic, empty space and circuitry. It doesn't matter though, because this one, unlike regular Stanley tumblers, can actually shoot water into your mouth. So let's test it. I'll fill it with nice cold water, point it at my mouth and press the button. Okay, let's see. Mm. Mm. Not bad. And I have a theory, but I have to try it again. Mm. Well. Mm. So basically, the longer you keep the button pressed, the stronger the water blast will be because the internal pressure will keep increasing until it reaches like a balance point. I don't know, like the pump cannot pump anymore. I also want to see how far I can hold this thing. If I put it here. Ah. Mm. <laughs> oh. Holy shit. It's like an arm's distance. You know, I realized that that previous clip doesn't even do it justice. Look at the actual rage of this thing. <laughs> I think I might have accidentally created a water gun. <laughs> what if we add Coke? This is the first time in history that someone is gonna drink Coca-Cola from a 3D printed tumbler that shoots the Coca-Cola straight into your mouth. Mm. No! No, la policia! Those final drops might be a problem because they can stain the, the plastic. Well, this thing was designed for water, so I don't care. You know, now that I think about it, if you added tequila to this thing... Yeah, this would be very dangerous at parties. Whenever the battery dies, just connect the tumbler to a 5 volt power supply using a USB-C cable. The blue light will indicate that charging has finished. Now I want you to tell me this. What liquids would you add to this super duper advanced bottle? Let me know in the comments.